So in this video, we're going to be looking at the logarithmic function. We're going to try to build up an understanding of what it means to calculate some simple examples. And then we're going to try to produce an understanding of the graph of the logarithmic function. So let's assume that we have some positive constant greater than 1, which we're going to call a. The typical values of a might be 2, might be 10, or the most important one for mathematicians is a special number which we call e, whose value is approximately 2.71828. Now, let's imagine we have a value x. We take our positive constant a and we raise it to the value of x. So this is a function and it maps x to a to the x. And what we now want to do is say what function will map it back from a to the x till x. And we define this to be the logarithmic function and we write it in this way. We write log with a subscript a, where a is this positive constant here. And we say that the logarithm to the base a of a to the x is x. So it is the inverse function to the raising to a power function. So therefore, what we say is that the logarithm to the base a of a to the x is x. And this means when we're looking at the logarithmic function, if you can write the argument of your logarithmic function in the form of a to the x, then your answer will just be x. It will just be the power here. So let's move on to the next slide and just see some examples. So a moment ago, we've just defined logarithm to the base a of a to the x to be x. It's the inverse function to the raising to the power function. So to make this concrete, let's assume that a is 2. And in that case, we can immediately use this definition to calculate some values. So the logarithm to the base 2 of 8 is the logarithm to the base 2. Now what we want to do is to write the argument here as the base to some power. Our base is 2 and it is easy to write 8 as 2 to a power because we know that 8 is 2 cubed. So now we've done the hard work. We have seen how to write the argument of the logarithm as the base to a particular power. The power is 3. So therefore, from our definition of a logarithm, this is going to be 3. So the logarithm to the base 2 of 8 is 3. The logarithm to the base 2 of 4 is going to be the logarithm to the base 2 of 2 squared. So that's going to be 2. So what I now want to do is just to write down the left-hand side of a few more relations and I'll let you just write the answers in. So I suggest that after I've written it, you just pause and produce the answers. So let me make some room for myself. So here are four examples for you to look at. In each case, your task is to write the argument as the base. In each case, I've chosen it to be two to some power. So I suggest that you now pause the video and work out the answers. OK, welcome back. So what we should recognize here in the first example is that 16 can be written as 2 to the 4th. So therefore, this logarithm is 4. A half is our next example, but a half is 2 to the power of minus 1. So therefore, this is minus 1. The next example is the logarithm to the base 2 of 2 itself, but 2 is 2 to the power of 1. So the logarithm to the base 2 of 2 is 1. 
0.25 is a quarter. A quarter is 2 to the minus 2. So therefore we have here logarithm to the base 2 of 2 to the minus 2. So this is minus 2. And another very important example that I want to write out here is to look at, let's say, the logarithm to the base 2 of 1. And what we need to do is we need to realize that 1 is 2 to the naught. So therefore the logarithm to the base 2 of 1 is the logarithm to the base 2 of 2 to the naught. So this is therefore equal to 0. And the number 2 here has not played a specific role in this calculation. So what we also see is that more generally it's also the case that the logarithm to the base a, where a could be some number such as e, the base of the natural logarithm, or 10, or something else, of 1 is 0. So that's an important special case. So now, building upon this case and this experience here, what I want to do on the next slide is to try to study the construction of the graph of the logarithmic function. So we'll move on to that now. So what I now want to do is to look at our understanding that we've developed of what a logarithm is to build up a picture of the graph of the logarithmic function. So we're going to be sketching the logarithm of x to some base a and here is the x-axis and we've already just seen that if x is equal to 1 we have the logarithm of 1 and the logarithm of 1 is 0 that we just saw a moment ago. So we now know that this graph is going to go through this point that when x is 1 the logarithm is 0. Let's assume now that we multiply x this one value 1 by a so we go on to here x is equal to a and at that stage we have the logarithm to the base a of a and that is going to be 1. So that's going to be here the logarithm value is 1 so it's going to go through this point here. Now if on the x-axis we now multiply by another value of a so we go to a squared so let me say that it's here then we're going to have the logarithm to the base a of a squared and that's going to be 2 so up here we have 2 and that's going to be at this point here. And you can imagine now, I'm not going to draw them all, but if we were to say be at a cubed, so somewhere here say multiplied by another value of a, you would add one value on here. If you were to multiply by another value of a, a to the fourth, you would add one value onto the y-axis for the logarithm. So every time you take your previous value of x, whatever it is, and you multiply it by another value of a, so you go up here, you go one value up on the logarithmic curve. So let's imagine, to make this concrete, that we had a being 10. We're looking at the logarithm to the base 10. So here we have, would have 10, and the logarithm is 1. The next value, we've gone up to 100, 10 squared, and that's where the logarithm is 2. The logarithm doesn't reach 3 until you go up to 1,000, much further out to the right here. It doesn't get to 4 until you go up to 10,000, much, much further out to the right again. So what's happening is that the curve keeps increasing, our logarithmic curve keeps increasing, but the gradient, although it's always positive, becomes less and less as we go further to the right. So our curve is going to look something like this. What about when x is less than 
1. What about here? Well, if we take 1 and we divide it by a, then we have 1 over a, or a to the minus 1, and so the logarithm is going to have value minus 1, when here we are at 1 over a. So that's going to be therefore at this point here. If you take 1 over a squared, you will be down at minus 2. So that point will be somewhere here. And again, as we approach 0, as we keep multiplying by additional powers of 1 over a, the logarithm becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So this curve continues down like this, approaching but never reaching minus infinity and never crossing the y-axis. So this is what the curve of the logarithmic function looks like, and I'll just give it a label. y is equal to log to the base a of x. So we can see that the curve passes through the point 1, 0. That's true for all values of the logarithm. It is negative for any value of x less than 1. It never crosses the y-axis. And the gradient is always positive. Our curve is always increasing. And it is always becoming less steep. But it never turns over. It always carries on increasing. So that is the curve of the logarithm, and with that we'll end the video.